Orient Township Municipal Complex boardroom at 2323 Joslin Road. It is uh, 7 o'clock. Can we have a roll call, please? Reynolds? Here. Gross? Here. St. Henry? Here. Urbanowski? Here. Walker? Here. Bracken? Here. Mitchell? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Perfect quorum. All right, we have a couple of sets of meeting minutes in front of us tonight. Um, two, two meeting minutes from our November 17th meeting for our regular meeting minutes and our workshop meeting minutes. Do I have a motion or discussion? Chairman, I move we approve the minutes for November 17th as submitted. Support, support by Mr. Bracken, moved by Mr. Gross. Any discussion? Any public discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please stay with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. In front of you tonight, we have our agenda. Um, is there any discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. We approve the agenda as submitted. Do I have support? Support. And support by Mrs. Gingell. Any discussion? All those in favor, please stay with aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, that leads us to item number five, brief public comment for non-agenda items only. Is there anyone present to give us public comment? Please step up, up to the podium. Please state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Tom Fisher, um, 3094 Beach Tree Card over here in Kensington, Keatington, uh, New, Newtown. And I'm the uh, chairperson of the Orion Township Parks and Paths Committee, which was reformed this year. And I'm also serving on the Orient Township Environmental Resources Committee. Both committees would like to uh, remind you that we're there and we're available to offer services. We have both, both groups have a great, great group of people in them, a number of environmentalists to help you with any detailed environmental questions you may have. Um, I, I've, I've done hazardous waste removal for my community college and a number of other things, and we have a number of other very good people. So we just wanted to let you know that we're here, and if you've got any questions, uh, send us an email, and uh, we'll be happy to help you. Thank can you very much. Thank you. Can you give me an example of how you could help us? Um, well, we've been talking about the electric charging, yep. and and what we think would be some good criteria, good placings for those. Um, I have experience in hazardous waste. If we were to have an issue where there was soil mitigation or something like that, I could help you. I actually have a friend who, who actually does that work at, uh, at, uh, in Minnesota um, for the unit, one of the universities. So we, we just got a lot of background and we can do any number of things. We can, when I was up in Port Austin working for a year, a question came up about a hazardous waste bill. In five minutes, I was able to look it up on the state records, know what they were talking about, and answer the question and say, it's safe, there's nothing wrong there. You know, well within the numbers. So just that level of expertise, I think, comes out and helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Tom, thanks for coming out. We encourage you to take a look at the master plan, too. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right, seeing none, we'll move right along in our agenda. We have no consent agenda items under <coughs> item six tonight. That leads us to item seven A, PC 2019-47, Lavender Ridge PUD site plan extension uh, for vacant parcels at the southeast corner of Silver Bell and Square Road, Sidwell 0936226001. The applicant is present. They'd like to state their name and address for the record, please, and just state your case for requesting an extension. Good evening, my name is Manny Kainicki. I'm the Vice President of SR Jacobson Development Corporation. We're at 32400 Telegraph Road, Suite 200A in Bingham Farms. Um, so we uh, are on, I'm happy to report, uh, at full speed ahead for uh, moving on everything that we need uh, with the goal of starting construction for Lavender Ridge this summer. Um, so we, uh, our Giffels Webster, our engineer, is working hard on the construction plans. We expect in about eight weeks to be able to submit uh, for review the first set of construction plans. We have our wetland permit. Uh, we are just uh, processing the conservation easement over all of the wetlands on the property. And um, 
our extension, we need an extension because right now our, our PUD final site plan would expire in February. So to make sure that uh, uh, we're not caught short, um, we just need an extension uh, probably, might as well, you know, I think for 12 month extension for okay. that project. So we're excited uh, finally. Um, we, uh, uh, the last couple of years have been tough. Uh, Lending wasn't available for a long time, but we now have a couple of financial institutions, lenders that are very interested in financing the project. Uh, we have actually one, two, three, four projects under construction. We continue to struggle, I think, as, as pretty much all developers do, with uh, uh, shortages of labor and shortages of material, and we're doing our best, uh, as we, you know, everybody in our business is doing their best to try to maintain schedules. Things are going a little slower than they are. Uh, the good thing is, is that the um, uh, absorptions are terrific, and we have waiting lists for projects uh, for people even two or three months out that are signing leases. Uh, so as soon as we can deliver a building, essentially it's leased up by the time uh, we are able to finish it and, and accept uh, residential uh, movements. So that part of it's good. So at any rate, um, happy to answer any questions if you want any additional specifics. Uh, but uh, again, I'm happy to report that we're moving ahead at full speed. Thank you. One quick question. So you guys are through your engineering phase or your engineering review, just not permits, correct? No. Okay. No, we uh, have been through the uh, site plan UD process, but we have yet to receive the initial engineering submittal. Okay. Understood. Um, so, the, so I have to go through that plus permitting, so. Okay. All right, thank you. Additional questions, comments? Uh, just a quick question. Do you foresee the, the material shortage um, improving over the next year or so? I, I know that's an issue for a lot of, of builders, developers right now. You know, I wish we could be more optimistic than we are. Um, we don't see a big improvement in the near future. It's hard to predict, uh, but um, with uh, solid relationships that we have with some of the trades, uh, sometimes things take a little bit longer, but we do manage somehow uh, to, uh, to continue to build. We have a large project, for example, we have a couple of big projects. One is in Troy uh, that we're doing with, uh, um, uh, with Edward Rose, uh, that's uh, 368 units. We're a bit behind there. We have another one that we're doing in Orland Park, Illinois. Uh, and um, again, things are a bit slower. Um, part of it is, is that, you know, we expect to have a crew of eight or 10 carpenters, for example, to rough in a building and four or five show up for various reasons. So there's, you know, shortages of, of, right. uh, of labor. But, uh, you know, we have, for example, we had just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were almost ready to move somebody in. We needed some vents and whatnot for the HVAC. So our contractors sent all of his employees out in a hundred mile radius to every Lowe's and Home Depot so they could pick up those missing pieces. And normally they would get that, of course, through their supplier, but they were, you know, getting it at retail and just in order so that we could move our people in. And they were able to do it. So, you know, again, I say it's a daily struggle, but I don't know. I mean, obviously we talk to everybody um, um, and we're not seeing big improvements, but we're also not seeing that it's going to get any all right, thank you very much. Additional comments, questions for the applicant? Just one, did you say for this particular um, development that you already have um, people ready to move in? You've No, not in this, this one? particular one. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. For that. But you know, as we, we usually won't accept um, lease applications unless we're within three months of being able to deliver a building. Otherwise, we just frustrate people. Sure. I just, I thought I heard that and I was like. We do on other projects. We have, uh, and it's really quite amazing because we have um, on, on pretty much every project that we're doing, uh, we have buildings leased up a couple months before we're actually, um, before they're finished and ready for occupancy. And usually these are signed leases with deposits. So, you know, the, the demand is certainly there. It seems to be growing. All right, thank you very much. Um, my general comments overall is um, it seems like the project's moving forward, so I'd be in favor of granting the one-year extension. Don't know if anyone has any other thoughts or willing to make a motion. Sure, I'm willing to make a motion. Okay. I move that the Planning Commission approves the final 
PUD extension for PC 2019-47 Lavender Ridge. Final PUD plan for one year to February the 3rd, 2023. Uh, approval is based on the following findings of fact that the applicant has indicated that they are in the process of completing their engineering and architectural plans for the project and that the uh, pandemic uh, over the last couple of years has uh, had an impact in terms of their ability to finance and move forward with the project on a more timely basis. I would therefore uh, move for a one-year extension to February the 3rd, 2023. All right, I have a motion by Mr. Gross to have support. Support. Support by Mr. Walker. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, any public discussion on the motion? Roll call, please. Gross? Yes. St. Henry? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Walker? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Bracken? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Look forward to seeing the development. All right, that leads us to our next new business agenda item, which would be PC case 2021-95, Lifted Investment 2, LLC, Ordinance 154, Application, Adult Processing, located at 4611 Liberty Drive, Sidwell 0934-300-018. Um, Tammy, is this? This, this is one of the ones I do. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a Ordinance 154 for an adult processing li um, located in Liberty Tech Center. Um, a lot of the ones we've seen to date have been in the first entry. This one um, is the second entry. I have done an analysis um, of the, and I stand corrected, I'm sorry, it's the same street. Um, all of the location requirements were met, the distance from residential, the distance from church, the distance from schools, um, the off of a road with a certain traffic count and not having the same entry into a residential neighborhood, it met all of those requirements. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so uh, before us tonight in our packets, there was all the supporting documentation that Tammy is re referring to. Um, again, these are reviewed by all of our or many of our department heads and, and lead appointed officials here at the township. Um, and it still has to go on to some additional approvals from here. So um, further discussion or questions for Tammy? Correct me if I'm totally off base here, but we always can classify this as a, what does adult processing mean? It's processing of the marijuana. So it's, is it is similar to the other grow facilities that we've approved? Well, we have grow, which is growing. Yeah. Processing is processing what has been grown. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm trying to get at, exactly what the, they want to do here. They're processing it. We've had other ones before. There also is a difference between medical and, and adult consumption. Well, this isn't consumption, this is processing. All right, sorry, I mean... Yeah, sorry, not consumption, but sorry, adult and medical use is the better way to put that. Okay, so, so this, there's so this is uh, processing of marijuana for adult use. Yes, many recreational. Correct, recreational okay, adult well, use. Recreational use. So th there is. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to understand right. exactly what the okay. difference was between this and some of the other ones that we've we've looked at. It's one of the cat. There's several categories within Ordinance 154, and this is one of the categories okay. that is allowed. Additional questions, comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion if someone's willing to make one. I would move to grant the approval of the application as required per Ordinance 154 for PC 2021-95, Lifted Investment 2 LLC, for an adult processing located at 4611 Liberty South, being parcel 0934-300-018, based on the fact that this uh, property is located within an IP zoning district, it meets all the distance requirements uh, as required in Ordinance 154. It's located in a building that has ingress and egress uh, to a road with less than 6,000 vehicles per day and is located in a building that has ingress and egress road that does not serve as a road 
to residential zoning or residential properties. And this uh, recommendation for approval is based upon the condition that it meets all the other applicable township ordinances and standards of the township and prior to opening shall demonstrate to the township that it meets all the rules and regulations <clears throat> promulgated by the state marijuana regulatory agency. Okay, I have a motion to support. Support. Support by Mrs. Urbanowski. Further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, any public discussion on the motion? Roll call, please. Walker? Yes. St. Henry? Yes. Gross? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Bracken? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you very much. That leads us to our unfinished business. Uh, we have a handful of items here tonight, starting with PC case 2021-51, K Industrial Site Plan located at 50 K Industrial Drive, parcel 0935400033. If the applicant is present, if you'd like to state your name and address for the record, please, and give us an overview of your application. Hi, my name's Maria Lucas-Savage. I'm here on behalf of K Industrial uh, LLC. Um, once, once that stops blinking, it will, okay. will allow you to, to turn on. Dave can see that back there. <laughs> and then there's Dave in the back corner. He's everywhere. Thank you very much. There you go. There we go. Uh, 38700 Van Dyke Avenue, Suite 200, Sterling Heights, Michigan. Thank you. So we are here again. Um, and Mr. D'Agostini had every intent to be here tonight. He was sick. Uh, and Sarah is out of town on uh, a commitment that she could not <coughs> reschedule. Um, the 50K Industrial is... In the K Industrial Park, uh, it, it uh, fronts Lapeer Road and K Industrial Road. Uh, as a refresher, it's this parcel is 3.12 acres. It's zoned IP Industrial Park. There's no wetlands to contend with. Uh, the footprint of the building is 45,060 square feet approximately 5,400 square feet of office. Uh, it does have an optional mezzanine, um, which would be a total square footage of 50,460. Uh, this is a speculative building. Uh, it would be the building shell uh, that we would be constructing initially in the outside improvements. Um, we did receive some variances, setback variances back in July. Uh, and part of uh, our meeting here today, we would be requesting some waivers. The first waiver uh, that we would like to discuss is the, uh, we did not submit a floor plan uh, for the reasons stated earlier. It's a speculative building. We don't have a tenant, so we don't have a firm interior floor plan uh, to offer at this time. Um, there was discussion in the plan reviews about a tree survey and removal uh, permit. The previous owner, uh, Joe Kay, he did previously clear this lot some time ago. Um, the trees that are there now, and I have pictures if you'd like to see them, they're inferior trees. They're, uh, I'd refer to them as, as scrub trees, they, they aren't specimen trees that, that you would uh, think to preserve um, in a development uh, park, in this industrial park. Um, this is, these are developed lots uh, that front a street, have storm sewer available and utilities available. Uh, and the, the tree survey was triggered by the requirement um, that parcels over five acres are subject to, to the uh, tree removal permit requirement. Uh, the, 
there's two lots here that we're presenting. They do share a corner. The corners do touch. They're not truly contiguous in the sense that they have a large adjacent border um, where you would contemplate wanting to be able to control uh, tree removal for land development purposes. Um, so the tree, furthermore, the tree removal that is taking place is in the, the building envelope and the ordinance contemplates not requiring a tree permit in this type of situation. So we're asking for the tree removal permit for both this lot and the next lot that we would be presenting. <coughs> the landscape waiver, um, if you're familiar with this site, there is a detention area uh, that fronts Lapeer Road and there is some vegetation and, and trees in this detention area. Let me skip down to the landscape plan. So in the plan review comments, there's the hedge uh, row requirement on the, the west side of the west parking lot. Uh, for a couple of reasons, we would like to propose moving this hedge row to this street side. Uh, Primarily, in our experience, uh, vegetation or, or landscaping that's adjacent, immediately adjacent to the parking, doesn't do so well with snow removal, salt. Also, having the access to uh, the pond for maintenance of the, the detention area, uh, we would like to maintain that, that availability. And... Uh, there's a natural buffer here, which I think the intent of the ordinance was to, you know, shield parking uh, from any street sides. And because you have this space here, and because we're proposing trees along here, I think you have an adequate buffer. So the, the waiver that we would be requesting is possibly moving this hedgerow requirement to, to dress up the street side. Lastly, um, we would like to discuss the facades. The, the one requirement that's most concerning for an industrial use is, let me go back to, over 100 lineal feet. Um, the ordinance uh, requires projections or indentations in the facility uh, on this north side of the building, which would be the primary, uh, primarily the shop. There, <coughs> complying with that ordinance would compromise the use and functionality of that shop. Typically users, industrial users, they would either wreck this wall, they'd have equipment up on this wall, they'd have conduits and electrical services and airlines and such on this wall. So having uh, indentations or, or uh, projections out on this wall wouldn't be ideal for the functionality of the space. Um, we do want to enhance this north side that faces K Industrial with a brick facade. If you hop over to our elevations, we're proposing a brick veneer. This would be metal panel siding similar to what's on the opposite side of the street with K Automotive. Um, and then we could soften it up with some landscape features. The <coughs> facade that we're proposing uh, would be on the front of the building. Ooh. A neutral utility brick, stone details, ribbon windows. Uh, we're capping the building with a glazing on the corner. We're proposing an entrance canopy to draw your attention to the, to the front entrance. Um, <coughs> the, the facade, uh, we believe, meets the spirit of the Lapeer uh, overlay district. Uh, some of the colors and and the palette for the building would be similar to this. Uh, 
Other items that were brought up in the, the reviews were roof screening uh, for rooftop units. We would uh, comply with that, obviously, and provide any roof screening required. Right now, because it is a spec building, we don't know where rooftop units would be located on the building. So we haven't really specified where that would be. Um, but practical, for practical purposes, we strategically locate our rooftop units in the middle of the building. So the parapet usually adequately uh, screens any rooftop equipment. If it is towards the sides, we'll plan accordingly and make sure everything is properly screened. Uh, wheel stops. We will uh, comply and, and provide wheel stops where required on the, uh, in the parking lot where parking is up against uh, landscaped areas. And then there was some details with the photometric that need to be updated so that the photometric plans fully comply and including the Lighting fixtures being parallel with the ground. There was some uh, fixtures specified that had a tilt on the head, but we will definitely put the ones that are parallel with the ground and uh, any timing uh, requirements with the lighting in terms of them either dimming or shutting off um, one if, if the use requires or if it's not in use at that time. So. Does anyone have any questions? Um, let me actually turn it over to our consultants for their review, and then we'll circle back, if you don't mind. Okay. All right, Rod, if you'd like to take away for Giffel's review of the, the project in front of us tonight. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to hit the highlights of our review um, dated uh, November 23rd, focusing on this uh, westerly most building uh, fronting on the pier. Um, as the applicant indicated, there were variances that were granted back in July. Um, they're listed on page two of our review. Uh, in terms of the, the use, um, the applicant has indicated that optional mezzanine level, um, so that and, and it, that has been factored into the parking, so there's no issues there. Uh, pedestrian circulation looks like that's all been addressed in terms of providing for sidewalk uh, um, connections. Um, we just ask that uh, the, the width be dimensioned uh, uh, on the plans, part of the final plan. Uh, design standards, the applicants addressed this as well. Lapeer road uh, overlay standards, there are um, some deficiencies that have been identified. Um, so that would be one thing that you would want to consider as to whether or not you believe it's appropriate uh, to grant a waiver for those. Um, if you do not grant a waiver, then they would have to modify the, the facade plans. To, to meet the ordinance requirements. Um, parking lot landscaping. Um, this is not really that much different from the site plan you just saw, I think it was last month, just north of here, um, that has an industrial building with a detention area and the hedgerows were provided there. And I, I think it's part of that consistent landscape treatment. One of the things about vegetation that might be in a detention area is that uh, detention areas get um, scraped and modified uh, for maintenance purposes on a periodic basis, and that vegetation may not necessarily be there um, if, if it has to be cleaned out. Um, the, the purpose of the low hedgerow uh, that's specified in your ordinance is to <coughs> provide that screening of the parking area. And uh, so uh, we think that's still appropriate, and we think it's consistent with what was just required north of this particular site. So once again, trying to establish some consistency along uh, Lapeer Road. Uh, lighting, the applicant addressed that. It looks like they're going to make some modifications, and particularly with the uh, angles of, of some of the lighting, and, and that'll, that'll uh, make some changes to the photometrics. Looks like they're going to make those changes, so I don't think that's an issue. Uh, tree removal, uh, as we point out, the majority of this site is going to be developed, so typically that's not an issue. Um, the, the primary concern we have here, and the applicant did verbally address that, uh, but I think I'd like to see some documentation that there would be, there are no trees that would qualify as historic or landmark. So those would be ones that would have to be mitigated according to your ordinance. 
Um, I'm not concerned about so much about the rest of it just because of the extensive development of the site, but I'd like to just have it documented on record. Um, maybe they could provide uh, just an overview by an expert indicating that no trees on the site qualify as historic or landmark per the ordinance, and then I think um, that, in my mind, might satisfy the intent of the ordinance. Um, so that's 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 something for discussion. If you think that's appropriate, um, to we, we just want to make sure that that provision is being is being covered. Um, th this is IP and in industrial park, and so we go through our various tables and and give you an overview, um, and we go into detail about the the Lapeer overlay standards, um, looking at the facades and exterior walls. So I think you've got some some good information there. Um, it, it clearly, you know, this, this does happen with industrial buildings. Sometimes we have issues with them um, looking for waivers because of, of the nature. So I guess the question is whether or not you believe this is appropriate and whether you feel like um, the effort that's been made to attempt to comply um, is consistent with other um, applications that you've been provided and approved in the past. Um, that is a summary of what we have for this, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. This time we'll turn it over to Mark with OHM for our engineer's review. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, our letter of November 23rd was our second review of, of this site. Um, the applicant has made uh, several improvements from our, uh, our first review, uh, but there's still a few uh, items outstanding. Um, <clears throat> as uh, the applicant indicated, this is an existing uh, parcel within uh, Industrial Park, uh, water and sewer were already planned for and provided. Uh, we are asking that they, uh, they loop the, the water main through the two adjoining parcels uh, just for some redundancy of the system, uh, which we agreed to do and are showing. Um, the uh, uh, Orient Township fire truck uh, apparatus is easily maneuvered through, uh, through the both sites, uh, so no concerns there. Um, Stormwater management, uh, as, as has been talked about, uh, has already been provided for. Uh, we've, we've taken a look and, uh, at the calculations that they provided versus what was originally planned for. Uh, their, their previous area that they're proposing is less than what was currently, you know, originally designed, so there's no concerns with having to enlarge the pond uh, or anything to that extent. Um, they are providing uh, uh, two two points of access off of K Industrial Drive, as well as a cross access easement to the southeast uh, between uh, parcels 33 and 44. Um, so that's uh, all um, positive. Uh, grading uh, looks good. There is a retaining wall being proposed, uh, which we're asking that they move to be at least five feet off the property line just to facilitate construction and future maintenance as outlined in our engineering standards. Um, let's see, they're showing a uh, you know, pathway along the frontage uh, as, as well as a uh, um, ramp to the north to connect into the uh, uh, stubbed uh, ramp on the north side of K Industrial Drive. Uh, there's no wetlands uh, to worry about. Uh, woodlands, uh, we brought up the same comment that uh, it looked like a tree survey was uh, was needed for, for ordinance and, and following with other site plans uh, similar to this in other areas. Uh, you know, a tree survey has been provided, so we brought that out as a, as a, a comment. So um, <coughs> overall, it was our, our opinion that the um, you know, plan was not in compliance for those reasons. Uh, again, one, needing to move the retaining wall. Two, uh, we're asking that they clean, clean up uh, the, the limits of disturbance uh, on the south and west ends of the project. Uh, number three, that the proposed exterior light pole locations be shown on the, the plan so we can verify utility conflicts, if any. Um, number four, they should provide a written description of the proposed land use on the cover sheet. Uh, five, they needed to add an ag base to the sidewalk pavement section that was included 
and number six was uh, uh, the tree survey uh, requirements. So um, that's all we had. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Mark, I did have one question specific to your comment about um, relocating the uh, retaining wall. Do you think that influences the parking layout or building layout at all if that were to move, or do you think that's feasible with the current layout? Um, it, it's feasible. That, that there's already some overhead of, you know, utility lines there. Um, I mean, if it's something that their engineer is going to have to look at, too, to see if, if it is feasible. If it's not, it just may need to obtain some um, easements off-site. So it's, it's an either-or. Thank you. Question for our experts. Go ahead. Um, the, with the floor plan waiver, I understand the reason for it, given that there's not a tenant yet. Is there a way to delay that until a tenant is found and <coughs> that tenant has to apply for the floor plan waiver? In other words, without having to give up the right where they just do ever, you know, can do whatever they want because we're waiving it now. I mean, this this comes up sometimes, and I think that could come in at a later stage when they have a better feel. I think it could be conditioned upon a floor plan being submitted. I, I think it could be an administrative review unless there's a reason that the administration sees that it needs to come back. But I have no issues with recommending that you approve that subject to um, administrative review of floor plan at a later date. Which could also cover the um, screening of the, the screening of the roof, the, the equipment for yeah, HVAC and the like. All right. With that said, I'll turn it over to my fellow commissioners for initial thoughts and questions for our professional consultants and also the applicant. Um, I guess I'll kick us off with a couple of comments. Um, I'm happy to see, obviously, a speculative building being constructed for, for use. Um, I echo a couple of the professional consultants' um, comments specific to mechanical and things, just to make sure that that's planned out, that it would indeed be rooftop at, moving forward, not ground-mounted. We've had issues in the past with spec buildings being constructed, and then they say, oh, it doesn't fit, and then now we're moving stuff around and we're making it work. So. Um, as long as there's kind of a game plan for that in the future. Uh, yeah, we strategically oversized Joyce okay. in the in the design uh, to contemplate either doing rooftop units to fully condition the space, or these units or these buildings oftentimes get makeup errors in a couple strategic locations. So there's not too many options on conditioning that that building, and and we plan accordingly by sizing the Joyce so we can. Put them where we need to. Wonderful to hear. <laughs> Gone through many buildings myself and run into that issue. Um, I do agree also with the comments from both consultants for, for the trees. Um, you know, it's something I understand that um, it's tricky. It's a, uh, there's a large development area, and therefore most of the trees fit within that, within the spirit of our ordinance. Um, Myself, I you know would be open. I think our ordinance outlines either landscape architects or or an arborist to essentially just provide a letter, you know, saying that there aren't landmark or, or historical trees. I'd be open to that, um, you know, as long as we're all kind of on the same page and our staff agrees to that that letter, um, <clears throat> that would be fine with me. Um, I also I'm, I'm not in favor with waiving the Lapeer overlay design standards. I think I agree. There's some nice materials being proposed right now, but I think they're is the ability to meet them. I don't think the spirit of the ordinance is to inhibit interior use, but rather create just some, some rhythms and patterns, potentially in masonry, even with a four or 12 inch step um, that just breaks up a 100 foot long facade. Um, so I think that could be easily met even with some of the materials that are being proposed here tonight. That's just my opinion and a couple of initial thoughts and turn it over to everyone else for their, their opinions. I guess I don't understand the reason for wanting to move the landscaping. I mean, it seems like such a minor issue compared to everything else that's being asked for. Why even bother? No, we do want to move that hedgerow to that north side. Is 
But if you wanted everything else, why not say, hey, we're willing to put in the hedgerow where it's planned and add the additional hedgerow? That, that was, we're actually good with that. Uh, we were just, for the maintenance of the pond, um, and just as property managers, we know that the uh, <clears throat> plantings don't do very well adjacent to parking areas with snow removal, salt, and such. But to put a hedgerow, uh, if the, the Planning Commission feels strongly about it, we will surely comply. We do intend to soften the north property line, dress it up with some plantings. And if you wanted to add some different, um, maybe doing a combination of split face, brick, uh, and maybe different panel heights, we could propose some options. But there are ways, uh, we, it, for the functionality of the inside, we don't want any major uh, protrusions into the space. So as long as we're able to, to maintain a, a straight wall on the inside, that's important for the users. Understood. Um, Derek, I don't know if you, that, that answered your question or not. She kind of was answering both, so I want to give you the chance to respond to the first half. Or I understood it as you'd be willing to concede. And Yeah, well, if, if the Planning Commission to, to satisfy and, and move forward in getting, a, in getting an approval, we would be glad to put in that hedgerow uh, on the west side as well as dressing up the north side with, with plantings. Okay. Um, and then to your second comment, I agree. I'm not looking here to inhibit interior floor space. Um, we've asked other industrial buildings to do similar things, you know, to create some pilasters, you know, relief mm -hmm. in the facade. Um, you know, I don't think it's intended to necessarily be anything crazy or ornate, but rather create some nice kind of um, scale and, and, and rhythm through those neighborhoods. I know some of the buildings that's been the comments in the past when they've been very super long facades and it's very plain Jane and we understand it's an industrial area but we still want to continue to raise the bar and promote nice facilities. So Certainly. So. Mr. Chair? Yes sir, Mr. Walker. I sort of compare this to the requests for the PUDs we've gotten recently. Uh, the petitioners in front of us asking for a number of things. Uh, many, and this is, I think, the second time you've been here on, on the subject. And there are still way too many moving parts as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, the, and I'm, first of all, I'm the tree guy on the board, okay? And the Cavalier, well, these are just scrub trees. We don't have to deal with that. But we have a tree ordinance to, to do that. And even if, if those trees didn't qualify for that ordinance, you would think it'd be nice for you to say, well, we'll put, some, we'll put some stuff around. We'll put some sort of greenery around the project. There's a number of uh, objections still uh, from, the, from the planner and, and uh, from the architect, and, <clears throat> not the architect, the, the engineer. And uh, I think there's, there's just too much. And we, my opinion again, we often go too far uh, I would rather have you back here having this stuff fixed and then asking. And you, the zoning board has already granted you six variances on this property. So it's not that the township is taking a real hard look at this. We're, we're trying to help you, but I think we're trying to, what you're asking for is try, ask, asking us to help you too much as it's presented right now. That's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Additional comments, questions? May I respond? Go ahead, please. We, we'd be glad to have our landscape architect. Actually, he was already out to the site to, to give us an opinion of the vegetation that's out there. We'd be glad to have our landscape architect uh, write the letter that you had suggested. Um, with respect to uh, some of the comments on both the Givels and OHM reviews, in speaking with Mr. Landis, I think we agreed in our previous discussions that a lot of the comments could be addressed and, and uh, corrected during the engineering uh, phase of, of the development. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I... There was a, a 
few comments on the next case, 44, that I felt we could push to, to engineering. Okay. Um, but uh, the items on our letter for this particular case, I think, should be addressed at site plan. Can I, may I touch upon some of these comments? The, uh, the limitations of disturbance where it matches the existing grades, uh, that is, is something that I understood that we could address during the, in, in the uh, engineering phase. Um, with the photometrics, we, in, in identifying the, the lighting poles, that peripheral uh, photometrics was where it was deficient around the perimeters. We, we were going to add the, the lighting poles to the perimeters. Um, the description of the land use, because it is a speculative building, I guess there is, short of it being an industrial shell, we don't have a, a land use at this time. Um, so some of these, you know, up the pavement section, having more detailed sections, I, I, uh, Uh, that uh, it was my understanding that these were items that could be done during in the engineering phase. And then, of course, the letter we've, we've discussed, you know, addressing the tree survey uh, ordinance item with the letter. So uh, I respectfully request that this site plan be approved as it is today, and we, we address these comments in the engineering phase if at all possible. Additional thoughts, at least where we stand now, and yeah, I kind of uh, think that there's a number of these issues that are basically administrative items that need to be resolved during the actual submission of detailed uh, engineering plans. Uh, I kind of like the fact that the uh, applicant is maintaining the large setback from Lapeer Road with the uh, detention pond in the front, which is complementary to the detention pond of the property to the north. Uh, and that additional setback, I think, does provide some relief to the uh, architectural facade of the, uh, of the building. I think the facade that they are showing for the the Pier Road frontage is uh, acceptable in terms of our overlay district. The north wall uh, could uh, could use some additional relief, uh, just some architectural relief uh, to soften it up. Uh, and the applicant has indicated that there's an opportunity to, to use different materials along that, that north wall to uh, provide some visual relief of that, uh, that north wall. Um, I think the, uh, both the, the planner and the, the engineer have identified some issues that uh, can be resolved uh, internally and administratively. And uh, for one, I'm, I'm prepared to move forward with this. Okay. Additional thoughts at this time? I guess my response would be is, um, you know, I agree I'm always in favor of, of moving forward with projects um, with, um, you know, the chance to keep, keep development rolling along. Um, I guess I would just say um, I still would uh, promote us to, to not waive the Lapeer overlay standards. I think we, that should be demonstrated in a revised elevation, I guess is my only response to, to that. I would be in favor with um, administrative reviews of some of the other items as, as long as they don't trigger uh, the intent changing drastically from what we're seeing here tonight. Would the 
revised uh, elevation, is that something we could move forward with? Are you suggesting approving condition upon a revised elevation for the north uh, facade? Correct. I mean, the, it doesn't necessarily just apply to the north facade, but rather the, the design standards outline just to say that they're, I forget word for word exactly what it said. It's, it's outlined in Giffel's review, but specific to, you know, providing relief on a 100-foot facade of... Canopies, projections, recesses, you know, just various things that, that relieve that facade. So, I, correct. I think my problem with that is that that's not an administrative thing. Mm -hmm. And so if we say, I mean, who's, they could resubmit it and then who's going to review it? Agreed. I mean, yep. that's, that's our job. That's one of the things that we, I mean, we do the waivers. Mm -hmm. It's not an administrative thing. Yep. And, well, and, yeah. One thing I do want to point out, I don't know how familiar everybody is with the subdivision. Um, it's an older, older development. Um, and the surrounding facilities, this is the K Industrial facility that is right across the street. Again, you see brick uh, below with the siding above the this building will very much meter exceed the the uh, architecture already in the development um, and the spirit of the the elevations I think is consistent with the Lapeer overlay district. Um, and the facility would look very similar to this with the with the canopies uh, that were proposed over the entryways. If I may. Go ahead, Mr. Brecken. So in order to grant a waiver for this ordinance, there's a standard that has to be demonstrated that we're presented here mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and consistency with the buildings around it is not part of that standard it's you know the standards required would prevent reasonable use of the site I haven't heard anything that the ordinance requirements would prevent reasonable use of the site the the for the reasons that I mentioned before was our concerns with the shop portion of the building. If you had uh, indentations along these walls that are primarily shop walls, it would compromise the functionality of the space. And for industrial users, that's that's very important. But, but you don't even know if they're going to be shop walls yet because there's no tenant, right? There's no tenant at this time, but we own and property manage uh, several million square feet of space and the requirements are, are somewhat typical. They want uh, straight walls for either racking, craneways, um, equipment modules, robotic modules, assembly lines, um, various things. It's, it's very much a lineal footprint. So, but to, to Scott's point, we could do some uh, different things with the, the masonry to, to enhance the perimeter elevations as long as it doesn't compromise the interior of the building. Okay, and, and the existing site design, I mean, I guess we don't even have any of that yet, the architecture, parking driveways you know, which would make the application of the standard impractical. I mean, has that been addressed? The... Or, or are we just, is it too early to even address that? No, what, what Scott has suggested, uh, as long as it doesn't compromise the, the interior, you know, having straight clean lines on the shop, 
we we could achieve the masonry uh, details that he had suggested. Mr. Bracken, I think your 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 comment that's potentially something that would present a fact of support or lack of support of the waiver. So that would well, that's what I'm trying to balance in my head. Is it is it support or lack of support? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I mean, at this point, I mean that comment specifically, I think, is more about if there is a, a a site feature or a, a site width or something along those lines that would make it impractical to provide that feature. What we're proposing is exterior masonry modifications to break up the straight wall, which I most likely would have no impact on the interior straight, the interior wall, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We've seen that mm -hmm. other places. Mm -hmm. yep. So I guess kind of moving, <clears throat> and they've agreed to it. Correct. Correct. And all, and all walls over 100 feet long, right? Correct. That's what I thought. The hope, if anything, the hope was uh, being able to proceed with full engineering and getting the project underway with, with lead times and, uh, you know, shortages of, of labor and, and everything else. We were, we were, anxious to get this uh, to the next phase of plan review. But if the requirement or the decision of the Planning Commission is to bring it back with some revised masonry details, uh, you know, we'll just have to live with that decision and, and forge forward and, and get it done as expeditiously as possible. Rod, you had a comment? Yeah, I just one option was brainstorming here could potentially be for a conditional approval by the Planning Commission subject to bringing back revised facade drawings, which would allow them to start the process of engineering drawings, come back, bring the facade drawings, doesn't slow them down, but still gives you the opportunity to see those and approve those separately. Just throwing that out there as an option. Okay. Thank you. All right, so thoughts, ideas on motions, consideration for motions. Um, you know, we've had some mixed discussions here, but it might be worthwhile having something on the table to discuss or amend and work through. Also open to further comments and questions. All right, I'll try it. Okay. <laughs> What I'd like to do, or what I would, will recommend, is that we approve the site plan, give the site plan approval with conditions that were outlined by the engineer and the planner, and delay any action on a overlay design standard until a resubmission has been made relative to the design of the building. That would allow the applicant to move forward with the engineering uh, work on the plans and give them an opportunity to return to us within the next, I don't know, 60 days or so, 30 days, with a, a revised uh, elevation. Okay. If that's... I'll try it. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's let's put it on the table and then let's uh, discuss it. We can always amend. Um, Relative to the site plan uh, for PC 2021-50 K Industrial Site Plan, located at 50 K Industrial Drive, on parcel 0935-400-33, I move that we grant site plan approval for the plan state stamped and received. 11 10 2021 due to the fact that uh, waivers have been granted by this by the zoning board of appeals on july the 12th 2021 uh, for various uh, green belt setbacks and parking setbacks and dumpster locations <clears throat> approval is based upon the conditions that the applicant comply with uh, the Township Planners Review Letter of November 23rd, 2021, 
with items number one through five and two that the uh, applicant uh, resolve the issues relative to the Township Engineers Review Letter of November 23rd, 2021, items one through six, uh, with the understanding that a tree review will be done by a qualified arborist or landscape architect regarding the tree inventory and quality of the trees on the site. Uh, and that the design of the exterior building relative to the Lapeer overlay design standards be postponed until a revised design plan has been submitted to the Planning Commission relative to the design standards within the district. Motion? Is, ask me to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Or support, should I say? Okay. Um, support. Okay. Support by Mr. St. Henry, thank you. A um, couple of items. Did we address, we have the, did I miss the Giffels review? Was yeah. that mentioned in there? And then there is also fire. There's comments for fire about uh, visibility. Just a dumpster location. For, for visibility to FDC connection. Yeah, the, to touch upon the FDC connection, right now they proposed it coming in towards the back of the building. I would suggest putting it uh, somewhere along this south facade where you could have your strobe easily visible and it's on a no uh, parking fire lane. Uh, that was a poor choice. I don't know who proposed that there, but th the best location would be somewhere along this wall, probably towards the front, because you don't want to be towards the uh, dock, dock wall, um, and it would come straight off that water main that's being looped around. Okay. So essentially there's an understanding that, that those comments would be addressed to um, the liking and approval of the fire marshal. So clarification of the motion, is that how you understood it? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, so on the table we have a conditional approval um, to essentially allow for the applicant to come back with a revised facade that meets the Lapeer overlay design standards to come back before us, um, along with the opportunity to address all of the comments outlined in Giffels Webster's review, along with um, OHM's review and the fire marshal's review. And to clarify, those are to be administratively reviewed and are any of those to come back before us as a planning commission to review. Just wanna make sure it's very clear. If they think it's necessary. If correct, I'm just clarifying and this can be a discussion because anyone in rules Robert's rules can amend a motion as we've learned this year, but just saying, just to clarify, and if there is a disagreement um, about the motion on the table, we're happy here to discuss it. So, Mr. Chair? Mr. Walker, go ahead. Let me just for clarification. Thank you. I may have misheard the motion maker, but I believe he referred to the actions taken by the zoning board as a granting of waivers yep. as opposed to a granting of variances. And I don't know whether that would torpedo a motion or not, but I think that should be at least clarified. Okay. There's a request for clarification on did you intend that to be variances as granted by Zoning Board of Appeals? Those variances that were granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, thank you. It means I was listening to your motion. <laughs> <laughs> He's paying attention think, over I there. That's right. Yep. Done. Okay. Okay, so with that said, we do have a motion, we do have a second, there's been a couple of clarifications here. Additional comments, questions, concerns? Can you show us again, talk to me again about the, the dumpster? Where are you moving it? So, we're not moving the dumpster. The fire department had a concern, let me zoom in. The FDC connection, um, the fire, 
the fire uh, department connection into the building is being brought in through the back and is being proposed back here by the dumpster. I agree with the fire department. It's a poor location as a practical matter. There's a possibility for there to be debris or whatever uh, placed here. The appropriate area for an FDC connection would probably be somewhere along the south side of the building where it's fully accessible to uh, a fire water truck to charge the system. Um, and you would just come straight off that water main that's proposed uh, okay. right down there and just have a, a lead straight into the building. Thank you. Okay. Um, further comments, questions, concerns? just would like to, um, I guess, clarify it would be the intent for these to be re-reviewed by a professional consultants, correct? Is that our intent here? Agreement. Agreements on the motion of that, that there yes, would be professional those are, reviewed. Yeah, those are details within the various engineering yeah. standards. And, and you intend them to be re-reviewed. Correct. Okay, thank you for the clarification. All right, further discussion. Any comments, questions, concerns for professional consultants? Public comment on the motion, including from yourself. Um, again, we're, we're very eager and anxious to get development going uh, in, this, in this township. We're excited to do business, excuse me, to do business here. Between the two buildings, we anticipate this being about an $8 million investment on the, the shells. Um, we'd be glad to bring a new proposed facade back for the uh, Planning Commission's review um, and would, would be very uh, excited to move forward on a conditional basis uh, with all the other items addressed. I did have some clarification. It was a, a letter, do you want a full tree inventory? Uh, Review by a landscape architect or arborist. Okay. Yes, and, and we actually, as I mentioned before, we, we had a landscape architect out to look at the site. Um, and I'm confident we can fully satisfy that request. Okay, thank you. Any further dis uh, public comment on the motion? Seeing none, I'll entertain a roll call. St. Henry? Yes. Angel? Yes. Racken? Yes. Urbanowski? Yes. Walker? No. Gross? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, that leads us to our next item under our unfinished business of uh, 8B, PC case 2021-52, K industrial site plan located at unaddressed parcel 0935400044, a parcel south of 100K industrial drive. And give a quick <laughs> overview of that project and kind of just for giggles, I guess state your name and address for the record, please, just because it is a separate PC case. Thank you. Maria uh, Lukasavich here on behalf of K Industrial Land LLC, 38700 Van Dyke Avenue, Suite 200, Sterling Heights, Michigan, 48312. Thank you. So this site, um, it's right around the corner from the previous site we talked about. There is the corner where um, the overlap of the two parcels uh, meets. Some of the conditions are similar to those that uh, we discussed for the previous site. This is uh, a 4.39 acre parcel. It's zoned IP. There's no wetlands to contend with. Uh, the building square footage is 66,955 with uh, approximately 6,000 square feet of office um, and 60,955 square feet of shop. There is an optional uh, 6,000 square foot mezzanine, which would lead to a total square footage of 72,955 square feet. Again, this is a speculative building. We don't have uh, a specific user. Um, and for the reasons discussed in the previous uh, presentation, um, 
we would be requesting the building floor plan waiver uh, because we don't have a, a uh, definite floor plan for the interior of the space that would be generated once a, a tenant is identified. Uh, the tree survey and uh, tree removal permit, um, for the reasons stated before, we would be glad to get a letter uh, confirming that uh, none of the trees are of historic nature or would require pres preservation um, in the facades. Uh, we would we would also be willing to entertain uh, coming back to the Planning Commission uh, moving forward on a conditional basis and addressing any facade issues you have with the uh, reconvening with the Planning Commission at a later time. Okay. There was no objections by the fire department on this uh, site plan. This and I'll let Mr. Landis speak more on the, the conclusions, but there was a couple items that we determined uh, were were not a concern. Items one and two on the uh, items that needed to be corrected and the uh, other items were the uh, the other items that were discussed uh, in both approvals the rooftop screening again uh, we weren't able to identify where the rooftops went we strategically locate them so the parapet can cover them if they're not able to be covered by the parapet uh, we'd provide the appropriate screening at that time um, there were a few deficiencies on the perimeter of the photometric, um, which we would correct as well. As stated, the, the fixtures being parallel and the uh, timing of the lighting being shut off between 11 p.m. and sunrise, we would make sure that the, the facility, once occupied, complied unless their use required otherwise. Okay, anything else to touch on? I'll turn it over to Rod for our planner review. Thank you. I'm starting on page nine of our letter. Um, there were two variances granted back in July for this um, particular parcel. Uh, pedestrian circulation, um, as with the previous plan, um, <coughs> appears to be adequate, asking for the width to be dimensioned. Um, as with the previous plan, the building does not meet the standards um, in the Lapeer Road overlay, um, applicant has indicated they'd be willing to revise those and come back um, later. Parking lot landscaping, um, this one's a little bit different. Uh, there is a combination of berm and hedgerow that is proposed to meet the standards. Uh, however, we, while we found the height of the berm, we did not necessarily find the height of the hedge planted on top of that berm, nor the species that um, were proposed so I think that's a cleanup item that can be resolved um, with the next submittal but uh, assuming that they meet the 30 inch minimum by the combination of the berm and the hedgerow that would meet the ordinance requirements and um, the applicants indicated they'll make the lighting um, adjustments and the applicant has indicated that they will provide uh, a letter um, from the landscape architect that confirms there's no historic or landmark uh, trees on the property. Uh, so that's a summary of our review. All right, thank you, Rod. Mark, <clears throat> if you'd like to take our uh, engineering review, you can take us through it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our, letter, our letter of November 23rd, again, was our second uh, review of this uh, particular site. Uh, it's located just southeast of the uh, previous site. Um, similar the site to uh, Already had water and sewer available uh, as part of the previous uh, you know, um, industrial park development. Uh, water mains being looped through, uh, as previously indicated. Uh, there's also a cross access between the two parcels. There's one additional 
approach for this development out on K Industrial Drive. Uh, stormwater management's being uh, taken care of by an existing detention basin that was planned for and sized for this development on the east side of uh, Industrial Drive. Uh, that pond already has uh, uh, sediment for bay. It was over, uh, over excavated, uh, so there's no need for any pretreatment. Um, uh, the applicant is proposing to extend pathway along its frontage. Um, meeting ordinance requirements, no concerns there. Um, we did have a number of items on our, on our conclusion, um, uh, which after, f upon further review, I, I would like to uh, uh, clarify. Um, uh, number one um, is, is not applicable. Number two, as previously just mentioned, uh, the need for mechanical pretreatments uh, not needed since the uh, um, on further review of the plans for the existing pond. It already has a sediment basin, so that's not needed. Um, number three was relative to a tree survey, which it sounds like we're agreeing to a, a letter uh, from uh, their, their landscape architect to verify there's no landmark trees, similar to the previous case. So that's not really a, um, a need there. Number four is a, a cleanup item at engineering, same as five. Uh, six, uh, since the site was already planned for, would be not applicable. And seven, <clears throat> eight, we've already spoken to similar to the other sites. So, uh, really, our uh, concluding comments almost all of them go away. So, uh, at this point, we really have no further concerns with the plan. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, and as mentioned by the applicant, um, the fire marshal did review the project and um, recommended approval and had no additional comments. So with that said, we'd like to turn it up to the Planning Commission for initial questions, comments for both the applicant and our professional consultants. Go ahead. Do you have a uh, rendering of the proposed building? We do. This is the elevation. Uh, we don't have a rendering, uh, like a computer-generated uh, rendering, but we did this similar uh, facade at a different facility, and a lot of the architectural features that we're proposing here are on this, this building that we built, and uh, this one's actually in Shelby Township. This is basically at the, at the entrance, though. Correct. But otherwise, it's just block building. Correct. Here, uh, there, it'd be painted CMU on the uh, sidewalls that are adjacent to other buildings um, with metal panel siding. All right. And then the facade, the front facade will have you know, stone, stone details, uh, spandrel glass, uh, envision glass, and then a canopy with some metal architectural panels to call out the front entrance. And then the glass windows along the front? Correct, ribbon windows along the front. <coughs> Um, yeah, I would have similar comments to the previous one. I think um, there's some measures that can be taken to meet, meet our Lapeer overlay standard. I get it that it's an industrial building, but uh, would love to see um, something a little bit more than just um, low masonry, especially painted CMU and um, you know facade that's pretty blank. So, additional thoughts. Like, Mr. Chairman, like the previous plan, the site plan seems to comply with all the other ordinance requirements. There's some, some engineering concerns that have to be reviewed, but those are 
I'm sure there'll be others as the plan is reviewed that there'll have to be some revisions as well, but it won't affect the site plan. And there were some variances granted uh, by the Sunny Board of Appeals uh, previously. <laughs> Get it right. Relative to Greenbelt and... I don't even call them by the right name, so it's all good. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, so, similar to the previous plan, I, I would move that we grant site plan approval for PC 2021-52 K industrial uh, plan located at unaddressed, unaddressed parcel at 0935-400-44. For the plans date stamped received 11 10 21 uh, based on the uh, conditions being satisfied in the planners review of 11 23 21 uh, which apparently have been addressed as well as the engineers report of 11 23 21 and the fact that the zoning board of appeals uh, granted variances on July the 12th relative to green belt and parking setbacks. Therefore, the plan complies with ordinance requirements. Further, that a review by an arborist or landscape architect regarding the tree inventory and character of the trees <clears throat> be submitted uh, as a part of the condition. I would recommend approval uh, with the stipulation and condition that the Final design of the project be resubmitted to the Planning Commission to ensure that there is compliance with the design standards of the Lapeer Overlay District uh, as required on the uh, sides of the building. Okay, motion by Mr. Gross to have support. Support. Support by Mrs. Urbanowski. Um, is I don't believe all of the Giffel's Webster comments have been addressed. Am I incorrect? <clears throat> there's still the hedgerow. There's a handful. I mean, yeah, he, he um, indicated that that it would, his interpretation that it complied with the. Can you clarify a couple of your comments, Rod, please, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Sure. Um, regarding the hedgerow, it. It appears that it could comply, but we just need more information to confirm the species and the height of the hedge on top of the berm. So provided that is acceptable, then it would comply. It looks like they're attempting to meet the spirit of the ordinance, but I just need some more information. It's, 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 it, it's an administrative type review, but yes, we need additional information. Okay. I guess I'd be more comfortable with, because there's, I would like one or both of those reviews to still be included because there's there's comments on the tree survey for I, I guess I understand in your motion that you're you're clarifying that but I would feel comfortable especially in the Giffels Webster review in which references uh, mechanical screening and things as we move forward and kind of reiterate some of the Lapeer overlay design standards that I think we're looking to meet so I would like to include those comments to be met and uh, reviewed if you would consider that amendment. <clears throat> okay. Um, I mean, it's, it's there's a, a... It's not included in their summary. Um, <laughs> correct. So, I mean... I think it, in the bigger picture of the summary, yes, it's acknowledging, but there was a, a couple of requirements specific to um, hedgerow landscaping, so item under the reviews, uh, Lapeer Overlay Design Standards, item 8B, um, item 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, you know, and, and then 3A is rooftop mechanical, so the one is berm, the other is design standards. So I think it's um, worthwhile noting. I mean, I guess I would be in full support of 
a motion similar to that of the first that it allows us the opportunity to make sure they're they're met because if if it's even in minor in nature at least we're we're providing the opportunity to administratively review and allow our professional consultants the opportunity to review if if you're open to that I don't think which items are you I guess I would say that the open, I mean, in both letters, that just like we did with the first one, I mean, they're, they're minor in nature on the second, but allow the opportunity for a conditionally approved, <clears throat> I think we should be allowing the professional consultants to re-review to make sure there isn't something that we think we're, we're missing here, sitting up here tonight. So they're, they're minor in nature, but I would feel comfortable for essentially the comments to be addressed per both the letters. I th I'm in full agreement with the comments they're making. I don't think there's anything drastic that's being made and allow them the opportunity to re-review would be my request. I would so include those items being item 2A, 3A, on the planner's report of November 23rd and what, 4B. And I guess your, your motion previously addresses 1A and 1B because you're asking for them to meet the Lapeer Overlay Design Standards, correct? Correct. And just one more clarification, 8B is in regards to the hedgerow? Yes. Okay. Okay, so just to reiterate, two. 2A to 3A, correct, to be added to the motion? Yes. 2A, 3A, and 3B. <clears throat> I believe so, yes. Am I missing anything? I mean, I'm I'm trying to just state that to, that's why I would, is just address the open comments is all I'm looking after, and then that way we're not piecemealing this together. Would it be helpful if I I read through the the comments that were highlighted in the review? Um. Go ahead, Rod. Go ahead. Sorry. Maybe a way uh, to reference that would be to identify the items that are in one through five in the summary, plus any other items that are bolded through our letter. Because then we've got the rooftop equipment, we've got the facades. Would that easy, be an easier way to do it? It's fine. Okay. Amended a motion to address the comments one through five plus anything bold and essentially the review summary. Do you agree to amend your support? It was me. Sorry. Amended that support. Yeah. It was still a cave runner. But, but I wanted to do it. The, <laughs> the overlay redesign would still have to come back Correct. to the planning commission. That Correct. would not be yeah. done administratively. Understood as a clarification. Along with you. Okay. Any other comments, concerns? Any public comment on the motion? Seeing none, I'll entertain a roll call, please. Urbanowski? Yes. Bracken? Yes. St. Henry? Yes. Gingell? Yes. Walker? Yes. Gross? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We thank you. We're seeing you back. Thank you. Um, that leads us to item 8C, PC 2021-07, five-year master plan update. Rod, do you have anything else to add tonight? 
Um, just that we're going to go ahead and um, make some of the uh, changes that were suggested, and we will have a, a new draft for you for the for the next uh, for next month. And also, if you could let um, Tammy know if you would like a hard copy of the next version, um, and she will make sure you get a hard copy. Because there are a few members that are asking for hard copies. Is there anyone right now? Raise your hand. Yep. Hard copy yeah. of. Do we just want to go everybody a hard copy? Yeah. Or the okay. the next draft? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, yeah, any copies for all. Yeah. Good idea. Good. Here. Look, at this, look at this guy over here. See, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else to add? And just to reiterate with our schedule, um, we're looking to essentially bring back the draft and potentially recommend um, approval of that draft to be posted for public review in a 63-day period, is that correct? That's correct. So, you, well, well, so you would, at the, at, the, at the next meeting, if you're ready to do that, you would make a motion to forward the draft to the Township Board to request their permission to allow it to be distributed to the various agencies and adjacent communities for the 63-day review period. And okay. then we would go ahead and find, pick a date at that next meeting for when the open house would occur. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for that overview. Anything else to add with five-year mass plan update? Seeing none. Uh, any public comments? Item number nine. We have no communications tonight, and that leads us back to our favorite planner, Giffels Webster, on safety site design training, item 11A. Okay, this is one of our um, planning commissioner training program um, Two pagers and so tonight tonight I wanted to just briefly overview uh, some safety issues and it's kind of interesting given some of the discussions we've had tonight this kind of plays into it uh, one of the things we talk about is there's been a program that's been around for um, quite a long time from the 1970s called SEPTED which is crime prevention through environmental design and the thought of that is that we can design sites when we go through a site plan approval process to try to enhance the ability for um, uh, public safety officers to be able to see into the site, for people to feel comfortable moving about the site, uh, and to um, provide for uh, the opportunity for people who are in nearby to see into the site and actually observe and report activities that would be um, inappropriate. Um, so there, there's some issues. One deals with lighting, and these, these photographs are, are actually um, pretty interesting in terms of showing you good and not so great lighting that when you have those high intensity lights that are so bright and then they're next to an area that's dark, then your eyes are adjusting to that bright area and you can't really see those dark areas very well. But when we have that even lighting, which is typically reflected in an <clears throat> average to minimum ratio of four to one, it's kind of like the goal, then you can see across the entire site. And then that makes you able to <coughs> safer as you move about. And if you're a police officer patrolling, you can see evenly um, throughout the site as well. So there's some suggestions for, for minimum lighting um, in when those areas are being activity, uh, actively uh, used. Also, the color of lighting is, is, is become an issue because we used to have those old um, sodium lights that kind of glowed orange. And um, it's not, I mean, it may seem warm from a distance, but it also changes how your clothes appear in terms of the color. So if you see someone and you're trying to describe someone, and you may say, oh, that person was wearing a, a red shirt. Well, it, it may not have been red because the glow of the light is impacting how you perceive it. And so when you report that to a police officer, you may not always get an, active, an accurate description. So if we can use the lighting Kelvin, it's called Kelvin temperature that more closely is associated with daylight, it tends to give you a more true color rendition, and that's also something that's helpful. Um, there's kind of a nuance in get, not getting too blue-white so that it looks so cold, but having a little bit. And the nice thing about LED, we now have a lot more flexibility in fine-tuning that Kelvin temperature so that it's got maybe just a little bit of warmth to it but is still closer to a true color rendition. So those are things that are important to consider. And then sight lines, obviously, looking um, so you can see into a site and that you don't have vegetation that's blocking it, avoiding entrapment spots, 
Um, one of the things we talked about tonight is this requirement for the low, the low hedgerow, and that's a, a really good example of, of something that is consistent with the SEPTED technology because our, our, our concepts, because you're, you're, you're getting the benefit of the landscaping, but you're still able to see into the site when you drive by. Because the driver's eye height in a vehicle is typically about three and a half feet above the pavement. And your 30 inch high landscaping is below that sight line. And so you're gonna drive, when you're driving in a car, you're still gonna be able to see into the site. And when a police officer is patrolling, they're still gonna be able to see. But with a 30 inch hedgerow or, or a combination berm and hedgerow or wall, you're, you're softening the edges of the parking lot while still maintaining the ability for the appropriate safety mechanisms to be put into place. So um, that's a summary of what I wanted to go over. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Rod. Any questions, comments? Thank you very much. That leads us to our next uh, <clears throat> item of business, uh, winter 2022 citizen planner flyer. Um, as always, the planning department allocates uh, training dollars for us as planning commissioners. Um, one of the very useful opportunities that is provided to us is through uh, MSU and their extension program. Um, and they are offering citizen planner via live uh, Zoom. Um, it looks to be occurring through middle of February through the middle of March, about a month long process, meeting on Tuesdays. Uh, looks like registration would be their deadline is the 28th. So if you express an interest, please talk with Tammy and the planning and zoning staff. Um, they'd be happy to sign you up. So maybe by the next meeting, get a conclusion on whether you would want to participate or not. Am I missing anything? Just strongly encourage it. Um, with <clears throat> it having six sessions, it does cover um, a, a lot of material um, within a lot of topics. Um, I know that when I first started in planning and zoning, it was um, in person and it was uh, three days and, and at a conference and, and they kept you separate from everybody else. <laughs> I think Mr. St. Henry was with me at the time. Um, and, and it covers a lot and, and it gives you a very rounded um, knowledge and I think it's wonderful that it now is able to be done from the comfort of your home via uh, um, electronic means versus uh, sitting in uncomfortable chairs. Um, in a stuffy, uh, warm room. <laughs> it was an enjoyable experience. <laughs> but it was an enjoyable, it was an enjoyable experience. Spending time with you. <laughs> Always, Mr. St. Henry. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Thank you, Tammy. We appreciate that. Hey, Tammy, I do have a question for you. Do you know the date yet for the planning uh, conference, you know, the state planning conference for next year? Rod might have it. It's usually in April. April? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. Mission it's Point end. on Mackinac. Yeah. Oh. Big horse and buggy. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> that will be in Texas. Some, some deer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right here. Hey, you know, if we, we just have the date. Back. <laughs> and I would I would add to that each one of you either gets it in your place because it gets delivered to the township or you receive <coughs> home you receive the planners magazine which always has the dates and the location and some wonderful articles and, and a majority of the time I find them left behind on your spot so there is some wonderful information in that and I would encourage you to to look through it but by all means when it comes out you know you would be looking at um, promoting it that didn't happen this last year because of COVID and the township had purchased um, through Michigan a Township Association unlimited classes um, and felt that it was the direction to go last year. Um, so um, by all means, I will pass on the information as I receive it. All right, thank you very much. Can I quickly go on the other one even though it wasn't on the Sure, agenda. absolutely, there's so one. This one came after the agenda, this is one through um, Michigan Planning Association. <clears throat> it is um, Woodland Preservation Webinar. And there was recently a court case related to Woodland Preservation, um, and this is going into that case and um, discussing possible uh, changes to ordinances. 
Um, it's a relatively cheap. You're all a, a MAP member. It would be $25. It's paid by the township, but I guess I'm just thrifty. I'm always looking at ones that are reasonable. Um, it's it, in the evening. You would do it via um, a computer. Uh, it's not till January 25th, so what I'm thinking is I've got several days coming up that I'm going to have off. I would be submitting my um, request to go first week of the new year. So I would ask that you um, reach out to me if you're interested so I could just put it all in one credit card and get it taken care of. But I encourage, we've discussed the fact that we, did, we really want to relook at our woodland section of the ordinance anyways. So I think anyone that has particular uh, interest in trees <laughs> <laughs> might be interested in it. So please let me know. Thank you very much. Um, we do not have any committee reports. Um, there's always always ongoing site walk committee um, meetings that are going on. Future public hearings. Tammy, have we rescheduled? Yes. Um, the one, the uh, ridge. Let me open my calendar. We had a public hearing that was originally scheduled for December first that was canceled. Yep, it had to be rescheduled when we canceled that meeting. Mm -hmm. For Ridgewood, which is um, the properties off of Clarkston Road, the signs are located there. I'm sorry, I don't have the information in front of me, but the signs are there. Um, it is advertised in Orion Review. That will be, um, it's been rescheduled to January 5th. Okay, thank you very much. So, yep, seeing that this is our last meeting of the year, uh, our first meeting of next year, January 2022 here we'll have a public hearing at 705 um, chairman's comments um, would just like to note um, in the wake of all of the tragedies that occurred in Oxford um, for any of those looking to support uh, both time money anything any resources there is the Oxford Strong Community website um, that's been posted now to help organize efforts. Um, there's obviously a lot of funds and opportunities out there, but that is one way to get connected to not only just contribute money that's directly um, contributing towards families affected that have either um, lost loved ones or have injured loved ones, um, but also the opportunity to um, Provide resources in your own time to to students of not only our district but also neighboring districts, including Oxford. So, take a look at that for community updates. Um, and thank you, everyone, for any of your efforts that you put forth uh, to date. It's obviously great to see us come together as a community in the wake of a horrible tragedy. That um, we will get through it together. With that said, um, Mrs. Kendall, if you'd like to kick us off with. Nothing other than thank you for all that information. Thank you. Mr. Walker? All set. Thank you. I'm good this evening. <clears throat> Happy and safe holiday season for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. That's Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'm all set. Tammy, any closing comments? If, if any of the planning commission... Mission members would love a complete tour of the building. Please stop in any normal business day. Um, and I would love to give you a tour of it. It's a wonderful building. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Yep. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Happy Holidays to everyone. We now have 843. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Support? Support. Support, <laughs> Support by Mrs. Gingell. All those in favor, please stay with aye. 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 Motion carries at 843.